Hello everyone and welcome to a showcase slash tutorial for an industrial furnace station which fe features um, yeah, user-friendly interface, a lot of failsafe features, super quick burning of items with a rate of 2.5 items per second, careless um, creation with a lot of uh, failsafe options so in case fuel runs out or some other stuff happens um, the system won't crash and yeah compact wiring as well and the system comes in uh, three different versions at the moment one is the one over here which is encased over here and here you can see the naked wiring um, this is the most compact one and it's designed for fuel such as planks and uh, coal and uh, blaze rods and over here we got a smaller version which is designed for sticks in case you got a witch farm then you can attach this uh, one to your witch farm and since sticks burn up rather quickly I had to design this a little bit different. And over here we got uh, the only naked version in this case of a very uh, a, a little bit bigger setup. This setup here uses a lot less hoppers but pretty much does everything via minecarts only. And therefore, well, uh, if you are low on resources for hoppers or since hoppers do cause slight server stress, it might be a little bit better. But in general, yeah, it's, this is just for the people who don't have too many hoppers. Um, you can also build this setup here which uh, has a little bit bigger wiring. And to begin with, we will uh, build up the first setup here with 25 furnaces, which you can uh, put anywhere you want. And I will also go quickly above, uh, over the features what of the system again. So let's first of all go over the features of the system once more. At the top here, you will see this chest here. You, you are supposed to put uh, yeah, stuff to smelt in there. In the middle chest, there is the fuel. In the bottom chest, there is the output. Now, as soon as you put anything in the top chest here, it will be filled into this hopper minecart and it fills up till it hits 25, at least 25 items and then it will distribute them across those 25 furnaces and come to a halt in here. The way this works is actually pretty simple. As soon as you put a minecart on top of a detector rail and a comparator side of it, the comparator actually checks the fill state of the minecart, uh, no matter which kind of minecart it is. So for a hopper minecart, as soon as you put one item in it, the first one will go off uh, unfortunately, it, the detector rail only triggers uh, ever so often, so it doesn't update instantly as you could maybe see. So let's just put it out, you see it's still on, put something in, and now it's on. So it is a little bit random when it updates, therefore it's not always 100% consistent how many items there are actually in this card, but it doesn't matter as long as it's more than 25, since the last one will actually just stay in there and will be distributed the next time. So, uh, the threshold is 23 items. And then the second uh, redstone also goes on, uh, but by adding this repeater delay of 4 ticks, it actually grabs at least 25 items before the minecart runs over this uh, furnaces, over the 25 furnaces and puts the stuff into yeah, each of them. So the reason why I needed exactly 25 is each furnace takes 10 seconds to smelt one item, so 25 furnaces work at a speed of 2.5 items per second, which is exactly the maximum speed a hopper can transfer items. So the whole system is made up for this speed here, 2.5 uh, items per second. And now there is some additional wiring here which provides additional functionality. First of all, over here with this comparator we check the state of this hopper here. And there is currently one sand block in it, that is because the uh, sand is currently always dragged out and put through this hopper chain here, so this there is always one sand in here while it is running. And as long as this comparator is on, this torch is off. Now, as soon as the system runs out, because the top chest is empty, what happens is that the torch here will go on and override the threshold of this comparator, which means that the minecart will even trigger when there are less than 25 items in it. So to make sure that we'll uh, even dispense the last few items which other would otherwise be stuck in the top of my cut. So even if you put just a single sand block in here, it will even distribute that one and not just wait till there are at least 25 items in the hopper my cut. Yeah, so that's how this works. And yeah, I tried uh, to squeeze this all into an, a small footprint as possible and I think it's actually quite small so far. And secondly, there's also a comparator checking this fill state of this ho hopper here. And yeah, you can see it's connected to the piston over here. So this makes sure that as soon as there are no fuel in it anymore, it just won't release the hopper minecart. And secondly, since um, the stuff would otherwise get stuck in this chest here, 
and uh, um, it also locks this hopper here. That was important because otherwise if you have no fuel in it anymore for a while but still put stuff in the top, you will have this chest here full of items but no items in here so that the threshold will be always overwritten although there's a complete chest full of items. To avoid this issue I just also lock this hopper here as soon as there's no fuel in it anymore and this way it always works 100%. There's also another trick. At the bottom here there's just an item uh, elevator, a silent one, which uh, triggers no matter if the dropper down there is completely full or, com or only has a single item in it. And it will also um, yeah, work with the same pace, 2.5 items per second. And last but not least, there's one more uh, trick to it. I filled up all these hoppers here, which are dis distributing the fuel across the furnaces with, um, in this case it's ender pearls, it's actually even better to use any just non-stackable item f which is not burnable, so for example stone shovels are very cheap. And the reason for this is that the threshold of fuel you need to put into the system before uh, it actually starts working is just way lower, in this case you only need have to have one stack of items in each and um, not a whole hopper full of items. Yeah, this just uh, makes it so you don't need so much fuel. You can actually mix fuels anyway, so if I would be putting coal in here and blaze rods, it will always work, no matter in which order and what. Um, as long as you have the initial threshold of all these hoppers full of one fuel item at the first slot. Okay, so I think I rambled enough now. Let's get started and build this up. And before we do so, there's one important thing, and that is that this system here is currently, the way it's set up, orientation dependent. This rail here, as you can see, the minecart runs over it and turns left. So, you can only build this in an orientation where it will turn towards the detector rail. So obviously, if you, you can build it in every orientation, but then you might need to mirror the build. Um, so let's check, for example, if I press F3, you can see. When I'm facing west here, it turns left, that's right. When I'm facing east, it turns right. So in this case, you would have to build the detector rail on this side. And same goes for south and north. South, it turns left, that's okay. And over here, you need to check this previously before you build this up, whether the orientation is so that the minecart always goes towards the detector rail when you build it. Okay. So let's start with the area. I marked it out, it's 6 by 19 meters. And well, first of all, I would actually recommend you to dig one block down and we will place hoppers be, uh, which will be below the furnaces first. And to begin with, yeah, we need to dig exactly um, 30 meters from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And now we can start placing hoppers and till we are one block away from the end and we'll do the same on the other side and they all need to be facing into each other there we go then we can already place the furnaces on top i like to have them facing to the outside so you can see uh, better that they are actually already smelting something let's do this on both sides There we go. And now let's put in the hoppers which are facing always towards the furnaces. There we go. So before we continue building we need to pre-fill the hoppers with the stackable and non-stackable shovels. That means we should first of all get rid of the current inventory and then grab us all these nice shovels here and uh, start filling all the hoppers with shovels and on the first slot we need to have the, f the smeltable item. So I actually would recommend you to start with uh, filling up the furnaces down here with the uh, fuel. All of them. and. Then put the oak book planks in the first slot of each hopper behind it and then fill up the rest with the shovels or whatever uh, unstackable, non-smeltable item you want to use. You can also use stackable items but uh, it actually doesn't matter. Just something which uh, does not, uh, can't be used as a fuel. So 
So there we go. Let me just really quickly fill up all those um, hoppers and be back after that. There we go. Now let's get to the next step and yeah, for this we need again a lot of hoppers. And we'll place them on top of the furnaces. All around. Same for, for the other side of course. Okay, now we also need to place the 25th furnace, that's what I forgot before. So, one furnace here. And, uh, yeah, now we do have actually 25 furnaces in total. And now we need to place the uh, inner hopper chain. And it will be facing, yeah, just start with this. And place them all just against each other. Going backwards, and now we'll bend it over. So this one is facing it to the right and back to over here. So now it comes in handy when you use an unstackable item for filling this up because you can just put a chest uh, which uh, you just need temporarily and fill this up with your unstackable item and it will really quickly um, distribute uh, all unstackable items across all those furnaces. Let me just quickly give me, uh, myself some stone shovels and yeah, it will automatically fill them up. And then you only need to replace the first slot of each hopper once this is all filled with the oak wood planks again or whatever uh, uh, material you used. So let's just start from the back here. It will save on a little bit of time to, be, uh, uh, to have to shift all these shovels into the system. And after you did that, you pre-filled all the hoppers necessary. So then that job is done and we can focus on the redstone wiring. And apparently I forgot to fill in the furnaces down here, otherwise I wouldn't get... Ah, uh, we'll see. So let's just keep on filling this up. Okay, for the next step I would say we'll place the rails on top of the system here first. So let's just put one outer ring of rails. And doesn't need to be actually booster rails all over the place, but uh, in case you got enough, it's... Uh, just be, sh be sure to place as many as you can and then we will also place the corners, uh, the corners here and yeah already place the torches should be quite simple and we can do the rest after we build up the redstone so here we go and I will say we will start off with redstone. When you marked out the area, it should be rather simple to check out uh, where to place these chests here. Just at the outside, right here. This is the chest with where the output will be in. And now we just quickly dig away all the other blocks here, which I marked. To get some space. And we'll start building up the dropper. And yeah, let me get the resources for this first. Let's go on and uh, unfortunately I just noticed that I made an error. Actually the system is not 18 but 19 meters wide so I hope that this is not an issue for you. I will actually make an annotation at the point of the video where I say that it's 18 meters long. And um, yeah, so you need to have one more meter over here. Then we will simply place the chest one meter from the end and before we go on we can place an up fi upward facing dropper over here and continue like this. So connect the two hopper chains to this output slot here. Now one block, so the block comparator, block redstone block and uh, another repeater in this case. and. Redstone. So now this clock will actually already work when I put something in here. But um, there is one thing. First of all, we need to place this redstone here to actually pump up the items. Um, this system here will not work until you actually turn on the 
comparator torch when it completely fills up the dropper because the chest is full. So in case you forget to empty out the chest, it may actually just stuck, uh, stuff may get stuck in the hoppers here. So just make sure that this uh, torch is on and it will even pump up the items when the uh, dropper is completely filled up. So yeah, we are already receiving a lot of items here. Let's build up the upper part of the system. So to start with, we will first of all put one hopper chain Just like this, this is the fuel chain and we can already place a block here and the comparator here, this one, will later on check whether the fuel is going uh, empty or not and now we need a half slab at right this spot and this will be where the detector rail will be on afterwards. So let me just grab one real quick and yeah, we can already just start placing everything else. The rails will uh, for the normal minecart will just look like this. And now we put another comparator on top of here. And one over here. A furnace in this corner. And pre-fill that with 14 items. 14 is the minimum, you can also put a little bit more, but just to make sure that it's not a lot more. Okay, next step is we'll need a little bit more space over here. Place a repeater and redstone torch which will power the piston which will just keep the Minecraft from, uh, from rolling forward. So we also need a block over here now and this one will hold the minecart in place uh, because the rail only uh, the iron bar needs to attach to it so that's the yeah just has the proper form otherwise this cross section here won't keep the minecart from rolling back okay um, then we already got this now we can place the ch second chest on top of here and start placing the, the third layer of chests that will be one chest over here Comparator, uh, hopper, hopper, and chest above here. If you're wondering why I'm not using a double chest and uh, save on one hopper here, the problem is that the hopper minecart will instantly suck out the items, so this um, uh, comparator over here, which we'll need to place on top of the furnace, won't trigger. So it's important to have um, yeah first an ho another hopper and then the chest. Otherwise, the system won't work properly. Okay, now we just need another half slab over here. Uh, let me just grab one real quick. and put redstone on top a block over here and this way we'll make sure that this comparator triggers the uh, thre sh threshold over right as soon as it's empty yeah we were almost done with the redstone wiring so we just need to place another block here another torch then a repeater like this, solid block, torch, another solid block, another torch, and this solid block over here will be actually part of the encasing, so just make sure to put it the same uh, color, so f just demonstrate it real quick over here. You can see that this block here is necessary for the redstone wiring, but is also part of the encasing, in case you want to encase it this way anyway, but just saying. Um, then this piston here and another furnace this was the only way i could wire this wi while keeping the same footprint of the system and oh i actually made a mistake here sorry you need to place a solid block here and then the comparator so that i can actually place a comparator on top of this uh, it shouldn't be much of a deal to fix that and another solid block on top now we get that done and um, we also need to fill in at least one item of whatever you want uh, in this furnace here so that it will actually power this as soon as the piston here is extended. And currently the system is empty, therefore it's actually locked. But uh, we can now put in just uh, so much fuel that it actually at least fills up this hopper here and uh, this comparator turns on. So let me do this real quick. So 
So you can see it retracted already and it's about to fill up. So, yeah, and we will so soon be hold back to this hopper here. So now we are done with the complicated parts. We can now just put some marker blocks over here and if you want to, close them in between. And yeah, so that's, that's the way I did it in the other builds. Um, now, just in case it will whatever ever block you want to, and obviously you also need to place the hopper minecart in the parking position here, and we also didn't place these rails here yet, so just uh, some more normal rails, which yeah go in this direction and make sure that the hopper minecart travels left. So that's what I said; it's orientation dependent, and uh, we apparently also need yeah two more torches here so that all uh, powered rails are actually receiving power. So let me just quickly encase this here and show it one more time in action. So here we go, this time I encased it with bricks and I actually replaced the torches here with redstone blocks and don't know how to put corners on top uh, as chimneys, I think this looks <laughs> kind of funny. And uh, so that I could put solid blocks in the middle, but you can still see the minecart and it's burning properly. Um, I think I, last time I actually forgot to place the last hopper behind this furnace here this one. Um, so sorry if that is also a problem for you. You will see it anyway when you s trigger the system and this furnace doesn't receive any items or doesn't burn anything. Then you will just need to put uh, another hopper behind that one. Besi beside that, it should all work fine. Here I look uh, onto the system from the back. Hmm, let's actually build it this way. I think that looks better. You could even put a furnace down here, although it will never actually turn on. Not. Better just keep it this way. And um, yeah, that's the tutorial for the first kind of brewing, uh, smelting system. And yeah, now I will just make a second video about how to build up the system with u which uses um, hopper or minecarts in general for distributing the fuel as well and for sucking out the items. The advantage is that you obviously need also a lower threshold of fuel since um, it's not as much fuel kept in those furnaces. But as you can see, it's quite a lot bigger if you compare those two designs compared to this one.